Hello student, this is Anu sir from Kolkata and today I am going to give an idea about the Bohr's atomic model. The scientist name is Neil Bohr and the post, it was postulated in 1913 and uh, there was a uh, other atomic model concept before the Bohr's atomic model concept introduction and uh, that was a uh, Thomson plum pudding model and one was Rutherford atomic model. Rutherford atomic model is very important uh, uh, from the examination point of view. Lots of questions are asked from it. So I will suggest uh, students to know about the Thomson plum pudding model as well as the Rutherford atomic model and uh, thereafter comes to the Bohr's atomic model because that will give a clear idea about the Bohr's atomic model. There was a flaw in the Rutherford atomic model and, and that was the uh, electrons, uh, those electrons who are moving in a circular orbit around the nucleus will emit energy in the form of radiation and eventually it will collapse to the nucleus by emitting radiation and um, making the atom unstable but actually it is not so atom is stable in normal case. So there must be flaw in the Rutherford atomic model and that flaw has been removed by the Bohr's atomic model. So, so there are some uh, postulates of the Bohr's and let's start from the first postulates. The first postulate say an atom has a very small positively charged nucleus. Almost entire mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. That means that uh, the large uh, portion of the atom is impinity and the whole mass, nearly whole mass is concentrated in the nucleus because uh, there are three fundamental particles you know very well. One is electron, one is proton and one is neutron. Proton and neutron those are heavier particles and remains at the center that is nucleus and electrons are very very lighter particles that revolves around the nucleus in an in a orbit these orbits are uh, known as a stationary orbit whatever things to remember is that the size of the atom is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 meter and size of the nucleus is of the order of 10 to the power minus 14 meter okay 10 to the power minus 15 meter is also uh, written in some books and here the there is a picture of an atom uh, showing an electron moving in the orbit around the nucleus in which there is a positive charge Z e. Z is the atomic number and E is the electronic charge. It's a positive charge nucleus and this is the electron which is negatively charged. Now the next is second postulate. What does second postulate say? Electrons in atom revolves around the nucleus in certain permitted non radiating stationary circular orbit. Here, these words written in green colors and uh, uh, yellow colors <coughs> or orange colors must be remembered by the students because these are the, these words have a very important impo uh, meaning. Um, and here, stationary earlier, I have told you that stationary means the orbit will have an energy level a fixed energy level and in which the electron will not lose energy okay electron will have a fixed energy if it is rotating if it is revolving in that orbit okay so it here non radiating term uh, has been mentioned over here the if it is moving in a circular orbit, there must be uh, a centripetal force, just like this one. If it is moving in a circular path, an electron has a velocity v in the tangent direction. Okay, so it must have a centripetal force, and centripetal force here is provided by the electrostatic force of attraction between the two unlike charges. One is at the center, that is Jd plus charge and uh, the other is at the orbit where the electron is at uh, any instant 
and it has a negative charge okay that is here if I, I I could write over here the electrostatic force is equal to the centripetal force next is electron can revolve only in that orbit in which the angular momentum of the electron is integral multiple of h by 2 pi now what is angular momentum angular momentum is just the multiplication of the linear momentum with the radius okay the mv is the linear momentum and this is the when this when multiplied by r radius will give the angular momentum okay and this is equal to ns by 2 pi what does n n is a number and uh, it's an integral number it can have a value 1 2 3 4 etc whatever and h is the Planck constant it has a value 6.62 into 10 to the minus 34 joule second okay and n cannot have a fraction value that's why it has been told integral multiple of h by 2 pi okay and this condition is known as the quantization condition on the angular momentum of electron why quantization condition because only some fixed radius are permissible and this is why the angular momentum is fixed because this full term in the right side is a fixed quantity for a certain number of orbit suppose for n is equal to 1 this will be equal to h by 2 pi for n is equal to 2 this will be equal to 2 into h by 2 pi for n is equal to 3 this will be equal to 3 into h by 2 pi so it will have a it will have a fixed value so the angular momentum will also have a fixed value for first orbit for second orbit for third orbit and so on that's why it's it when something is fixed it is called quantization and this is that's why it is called the quantization condition on the angular momentum of electron n is also known as the principal quantum number n is also known as principal quantum number okay and the, so far the maximum value of known value maximum known value of n is 7 okay theoretically it could have value infinity but practically the maximum value is 7 next the third postulate third postulate say whenever electron jumps from higher orbit to lower orbit it loses energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation and by absorbing a quantum of energy the electron jumps from lower orbit to higher orbit that means uh, let us suppose in uh, uh, this is a picture of the <coughs> atom and there here the four orbit has been shown the first orbit is n is equal to 1 second n is equal to 2 third is n is equal to 3 n is equal to 4 and whenever any electron from lower orbits which here in this case n is equal to 1 here the electron moves from first orbit to third orbit but it moves from first or third orbit only when it absorbs some quantum of energy here the quantum of energy is equal to h nu where nu is the frequency and h is the Planck constant similarly from higher orbit the electron jumps from higher orbit to lower orbit it could jump from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 3 n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2 n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 1 whatever and uh, this way it releases energy and that released energy will be equal to the difference of the energy level so the mathematical expression is en2 minus en1 is equal to h nu where nu can be written as like this c by lambda where c has a value 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second which is the velocity of light and lambda is a wavelength this is the final energy level this is the initial energy level okay and uh, <coughs> this n is equal to 1 state is called ground state this n is equal to 1 is equal to call ground state and uh, whenever an electron uh, is removed from first orbit to infinity that means the electron is just pulled out of the atom in that case the amount of energy required is known as the annihilation potential okay so that's the uh, three postulates of the Bohr's atomic model I think you will like it and uh, just mention 
if there is any problem in understanding and I will try to improve myself and um, just share it with your friend so that they will also get benefited from my lecture. Thank you.